In the last couple of episodes, our boat hunting took us to the Netherlands, where we looked at several boats, very different from each other. To see what state the whole boat is. It's been a couple of weeks now since our uh, road trip to the Netherlands, where we had a look at some boats. And uh, yeah, the other day we got an email from the broker of the Olivier, the boat that we were mostly interested in. And uh, yeah, that boat is now sold. Um, that's what happens when you wait too long sometimes. Because we were a bit interested to put down an offer on that boat, but we decided to wait. Uh, partly because the boat is big, 57 feet, 29 tons, and we were a bit unsure about that. But also because there, there is another boat on its way back home here to Sweden, to Malmö and Dokkan, the marina we're in now. Uh, and a yard 440 that we are really interested in to see. And that's also the reason we decided to wait with uh, Olivier. Uh, but that's how it goes sometimes. And now we're really excited to see this Nayad, which is a really nice boat. And it looks to be in pristine condition. It's from 1988, pretty old boat, but it looks like... Yeah, really nice from the pictures, but we haven't seen it in, in real life yet, so... I have a couple of pictures on the boat here that you can have a look at. So here you have it. It's uh, very similar to the Nayad 391 that we had a look at, but five feet longer. Uh, it's 14.5 tons, the displacement, six tons in the keel, uh, lead keel that is, uh, how do you say that, encapsulated in, uh, in glass fiber. Uh, 20 meter mast, mast head rig, mahogany interior, two cabins, aft cabin, and the V berth cabin up front. Two heads with two showers. The Nayad hadn't been out for sale yet, and it's a quite funny story about how we found out about this boat. When we moved aboard Utriculus, we talked to the harbour master that we were looking for a new boat, and he told us that a Nayad 440 was on its way home from the Mediterranean, and that the owners were planning on selling their boat. He also told us that it was our friend Kai's old boat, you remember Kai that now has a Nordhaven 78. We wrote to Kai and found out the name of the boat. And then we found the boat's Facebook page and Instagram, where we wrote the owners a message. So are you sad that the Olivier is sold? Mm, I mean, in a way, because you don't have that option any longer. Uh, but in other way, I mean, we were quite unsure about it because of the size and everything. Um, so in a way it also made it easier because now we don't have to think about it anymore. Um, so, but now we only have one boat that we're interested in. So if this boat isn't something either, it doesn't feel right for us or I think what we are, the only thing we're worried about with that boat is that it might be feel too small. <laughs> it's always about that too big or too small. Um, but I, I am very excited and it feels really good. Just the fact that it will actually be docked right next to us. And if we, if we would end up buying that boat, I mean just the whole transition would be so smooth. Pick up our stuff, go on the dock, Toot, 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 toot. This is our new home. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> true. That's, uh, yeah, that's pretty nice. So we'll see. It's coming here uh, not too long from now. We're following them on the AIS. Marine traffic showed the boats leaving the Kiel Canal in Germany. They're in Klimtholm. That's not too far from here. It's a bit more than a day sail. Here in Denmark. And we're up here in Malmö. 
There's a lot of boats out there. The day was finally here when the Nayal was arriving in our home port. We had been in contact with the owners Ilva and Mats since they were in Spain and they had invited us to their welcome home party after two and a half years away from Sweden. Yeah, yesterday the Nayad <coughs> got back here to Dokken and we welcomed them and we got a quick tour of the boat in the evening and um, yeah it still feels really good uh, it felt like we like the feeling we had before we saw it like just looking at pictures is still there and uh, so that's pretty exciting and now we're heading over there again to have a little bit of a yeah, more, look a little bit more. We have some measure with us. And uh, yeah, it's like right next to us. So I was like nervous, like, okay, is this gonna be our boat? You start thinking. And so, crossing fingers. Everything felt so good with the boat. She was so pretty and well taken care of. It felt like the boat. Just the perfect boat for us. We agreed on a purchase price of 126,000 euros. And since it's a lot of money involved, we decided to do a survey. So today we're uh, moving the Nayad to another marina, just a couple of miles from here, to make a haul out. And uh, then it will be on the hard for a couple of days. And then uh, this Friday we're going to make a survey check for um, yeah moisture in the hull and uh, check the keel and everything like that so I really hope everything is okay because this boat is just so nice so I really hope that we can make this deal happen So we're on our way to Lagunen. It's only about, uh, I don't know, two to three nautical miles from Dokkan, where we left from. And uh, within, I don't know, two hours from now, we're going to haul out. Sails with uh, a bit different from from Ron, really. A lot heavier the boat, so yeah, feels different. Now we're just waiting for the crane. It's a mobile crane, so we had to take the back stay off. And I think they will just put the boat on the hard just over here. Because it's just a couple of days it will be here. <laughs> they had to call in uh, another crane 
because the slings on the one they have here only takes 20 tons. So when the crane driver saw that it was a Nayad, which is a quite heavy boat, it's not 20 tons but maybe 17 fully loaded, he wanted to have another crane hauling it out. So it will be another half an hour or so. It was exciting to see her being lifted out of the water. The hull is the most important part of the boat, so I was really eager to check it out. Now she's on the hard. I couldn't join the guys yesterday when they took the boat here because I've been a little bit sick. Uh, I have a syndrome here in my arm, my hands and wrists and underarms called like a carpal tunnel syndrome, which is you can get when you're pregnant. And I got that too. <laughs> so I cannot use my hands uh, pretty much. So it's quite painful and affecting everything you do like when you just want to brush your teeth or trying to eat and cut your food but it's good I have a help with me I can do pretty much <laughs> most of it but yeah work and stuff like that yeah suffers a little bit at the moment but I got curious to see the boat so we just pop down here now for a quick look she's pretty isn't she exciting tomorrow we have the survey and uh, so the surveyor is coming he's not from here like from an, an hour and a half from here he's gonna come and look at mainly the um, hull and uh, the mast look for any what do you call leaks or um, not leaks but uh, if there is any moisture in the hull that's what we are um, yeah, that what you can be concerned about and it's also something that uh, the broker and uh, the insurance company is asking for. A lot of things are happening right now, as usual. Now we might buy a boat and it's in just uh, four weeks we have due date for our little girl. My belly is pretty big now <laughs> so I'm in week 37 now so it's uh, 36 plus 1 so in just a few weeks and uh, I'm hoping that she will be a little bit early I mean it could be four to six weeks if I go over due date but with this uh, pain I have now and all these things I also have a lot of back pain I hope she's coming a little bit earlier we were at the hospital today and I got treatment, two injections here, instead of having surgery. And so we hope that this will help and that it will um, go away after I have given birth. I really like this bar thruster. It's on eight horsepower. The one we had on ROM was only three, so didn't really work but this one is really strong very good and there's a lot of features on these boats under the waterline that I really like the keel it's in lead but it's encapsulated in GRP so no keel bolts so the keel can't fall off so that's very nice and also it has a full skeg on the rudder uh, which is good because a lot of protection for the for the rudder uh, and I mean this is not the racing boat the keel is pretty long but it's not a full keel so it will track very well when you go downwind in big seas are we soon to be boat owners again? <laughs> 
Yeah, I really hope so. I mean, I really like this boat. Me too. Uh, yeah. So I hope that they won't find anything on the survey tomorrow. Mm. And I don't think so, because it's a well-built boat. Yeah, so this time tomorrow, we know if this is our future boat, Ron 2. <laughs> Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. A future boat and home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're down in Lagunen again in the harbor and the surveyor just arrived. It's a really windy day today, so I'm hiding here behind a shed to get some wind protection. Um, so I will try to film a little bit and show you what he's doing. It's not going to do that much, um, but it will be interesting to see. Everything looks okay. There was some one area below one of the windows where there was some moisture, but according to the survey guy, everything looks okay. But we'll see. There are some areas that he's going to measure from the inside as well. Because then the, the measurements are more valid if you take it from the inside to measure the core. Hey! hey. The wind was gusting to 35 knots straight on the beam, and I had a hard time keeping the lifting yoke off the stays. <gasps> the crane driver lifted the boat carefully back into the water without any problems, despite the strong winds. She's back in the water. Ah. Oh, we got some really gusty winds there. Just as they were picking up the big uh, square thing things around. Oh, it was really close to the stays, <laughs> but everything went well. Now she's back where she belongs. Much better to have in the water as well with the, these winds that we have today. Now we're just gonna get uh, organized and then we're leaving uh, Lagunen and heading back to Dokka. Vad känns det? Det känns bra. Kul. Den är så uh, tyst. <laughs> ja. Och ska jag säga vad stamp känns det som. En annan tyngd genom vattnet. We have the wind coming from land. But it still picks up a little some uh, sea kind of choppy seas. The boat passed the survey with flying colors, and the same weekend we signed the purchasing contract. 
We were so happy to finally have found our future boat and home. So what do you guys think about our new boat? We're super happy. Make sure to subscribe to follow the journey with our new boat. And we will of course give you the full tour in an upcoming video.